take you to the OR Tambo International Airport. Uh, Banyana Banyana coach Desiree Ellis, who has just literally touched down moments ago, is giving a live press conference. Where you don't have to work nine to five and then go to training. I'm sure you know the football will improve. The best will play against the best. We will also attract most probably the best foreign players on the continent, and that will really help us um, going forward. But we've got to start as soon as possible. It's never about me. Um, it's always about the team because I always say if the team does well, the individuals will stand out. I don't work alone. I work with a fantastic group of people um, that each has their own expertise that they bring into the team. Um, because without that, uh, we cannot do our well. We do the way we do when we, when we succeed to the players as well. Because we can have this grand plan, but if the plan is not executed, you know, then the coach is in trouble. So it's never, never about me. But of course, if the team doesn't do well, I stand on the red carpet. That's just how it is. I don't know the reasons why, and I cannot answer because I don't know the reasons why um, interviews were not done. Uh, the media plays an important role, of course, in profiling, plays an important role in coverage, um, but I don't know the reason why they were not done. So I can't give you an answer on that. <laughs> Very difficult to say. <laughs> Who do you think at the back there? <laughs> Who do you think? Very difficult to say though, because um, I think we gave as good as we got against Sweden. Uh, we did the same with Italy, even with the Nether Netherlands. Um, one goal this way, the situation would have would have changed. But I think the further it got. Because of the fatigue setting in, it became a little bit more difficult. But I felt that we gave as good as we got against each and every team that was there. Coach, good afternoon. First, uh, firstly, congratulations on the comeback. Coach, you've spoken about the logistic uh, of, of coaches and how the, it's about team. But are you able to take us through the raw emotions you came in close because? The ebb and flow of this World Cup was felt in this country from the loss to the draw where there was a 2-0 two -nil, two -nil lead, 2-2, and then the ebb and flow of the Italy game leading, of the Italy game leading into um, the losses. Just take us through your emotions throughout the tournament, how you felt, and what it just meant for you to be at a second World Cup, and also just looking at the improvement that you've witnessed from the start of Banyala Banyana in 93 mm -hmm. to working up as a coach to where you are now with this group of players and the coaches. Against Sweden, we had a really good plan. And for most of the time, the plan worked. We also had a couple of chances in that game where we could have gone ahead. And it was unfortunate to concede right at the end, the way we conceded, because we most probably handled them better than any other country. If you look at Italy, um, I see Illustrate scored again. It was probably from another set piece. Uh, we didn't see the game, obviously. Um, it was, it was disappointing, though, after putting in such a good performance. The Argentina game, I think, it was gut-wrenching because we had gone ahead and we had made changes to the effect of, you know, maintaining our lead. Unfortunately, we did not. I think that was worse than losing. You know, it was worse than losing, but we knew that we were still in it, um, especially after Sweden played Italy. We knew all we needed to do was win. Again, in that game, we had a couple of chances, um, conceded poorly, but when I saw 11 minutes go up, I knew we had a chance. And like I said, this team never never gives up. And we then scored and, and managed that really well. And then the Holland game, of course, in that game also, we had a couple of chances where we could have gone up and, you know, Kalen kept us in the game and uh, they scored right in the beginning and scored at the end, um, you know, and uh, 
that really set us. But in between that, we also picked up the two injuries to two influential players in our team. And I think that really set us back, and especially in the second half, there's a lot of fatigue, fatigue setting in. I think this team has grown and developed over the years um, with us also refreshing the squad on a regular basis to make sure, you know, that the squad doesn't come stagnant. They speak about 96. I think that was, that may be what happened there. But we made sure that we regularly refresh the squad to make sure that, you know, there's um, sustainability um, and on a regular basis. And I think that, that for us is really, really important to bring those players in at the right time to make sure that they also get the experience, whether it's at the Kosafa Cup or at the WAFCON, etc. I think, um, for me, it's, uh, it's never about me. It's obviously a great achievement. You will look back and you'll say, I think we will look back and say to ourselves, we could have maybe won the World Cup because it was there for the taking. If you look at the results that have gone, I don't think no team felt, felt um, confident that they would win the match. Um, I looked at the results now just past and I, and I really looked at Japan and I thought they would go further, but it didn't happen. You look at Germany going out, you look at Brazil going out, you look at all these countries going out and you say to yourself, this is a type of World Cup where if somebody goes on a good run, you know, all the way, they could have, could have won it all the way. And unfortunately, we, that, that was just a little bridge too far for us, but we're really happy with the progress. Um, now it's about preparing for the next four years. Um, obviously, the Olympics is next year, but preparing for the next four years. And um, we'll take a break and then see what happens after that. <coughs> My name is Kumuto Mkwena from Vande My question is for the coach and the deputy president. Uh, I'm going to ask about the thorny issue of bonus incentive. I think when the team left, there was a bit of a deadlock. And, and, and Kato, can you tell us if there's been a, there's an agreement now or if that matter has been resolved and what's the way forward for the support staff? I cannot speak on that behalf. I think um, maybe the vice president needs to come in there because the negotiations is not done with me. The negotiations is done with the players. It's done with the staff. So uh, he will be the best person to answer that question. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I think uh, that that matter, uh, we, we have a number of times uh, alluded to it. And of course, uh, the CEO is the right person to be dealing with those things. And when she was here, um, such a question came, and she was clear that uh, they are dealing with that matter. But with the players, I know it's, uh, it, it was it was a great. And of course, there are suggestions and issues around the, the staff and all of that, which is taking is being given the necessary attention by the administration. And right, that brings us to half past five. We will have more details for you from the Desri Ellis press conference happening live right now at the OR Tambo International Airport.